Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new video on the horizontal conjugate gaze pathway. So what we're going to be discussing in this video, uh, specifically focusing on the muscles that control the eye's movement in horizontal plane, looking at lateral medial rectus muscles, that'll be our focus. We will discuss some of the other muscles as well, uh, but we're going to focus on those too. Uh, we'll talk about the, uh, the pathway, the different nuclei, the medial longitudinal fasciculus, and the nerves that control the eye muscles. Then we're going to talk about two very common lesions of this pathway, um, one of them called horizontal gaze palsy, one of them called internuclear ophthalmoplegia. So really what I want to do on the first part is discuss that there are three nerves that control the eye movement. Uh, three nerves, and these are cranial nerves, control eye muscles, okay, control eye movement. So uh, now there is some convenient ways to remember these and what it is they actually control, and I'm going to give that here in just a second. Uh, but uh, there are three of them, and I'm actually going to start uh, with the one, uh, not in order of number, but I actually am going to discuss first um, is uh, CN6, the abducent nerve, which controls the lateral rectus muscle. And then I want to discuss um, CN number uh, four, and uh, that controls uh, the obliques, uh, but actually I'm going to do that one, uh, sorry, um, uh, a little bit uh, later, CN3, uh, which does all the rest of the muscles, and then CN4, which is not going to play a role for us here. It controls the superior oblique muscle, which is not going to play a role for us. So really, it's just going to be these two right here that we're going to be worried about. Um, now, one of the ways that we can discuss this to help kind of remember uh, what does what is um, is kind of like a fake chemistry, chemical formula is LR6SO4O3. Uh, and uh, so basically what this says is, is the lateral rectus, cranial nerve number six, superior oblique number four, and the others are three, okay, oculomotor nerve. And what it is that these, uh, that CN6 and CN3 are going to play a role for us is something called conjugated gaze. And when I say that a gauge is conjugated, a conjugate gaze means you have both eyes moving in unison to produce a fluid movement and in the same direction. So if you look this way to the left, both eyes would move fluidly to the left in the same direction. Consequently, if you were to go the other way here, and look in the wanting to look in the other direction towards the right, then both eyes should look towards the right side, and they should do so in the same rate, same speeds, the same uh, spatial dimensions, equally, fluidly, uh, in unison. You shouldn't have one be delayed or not move at all. So, I hope you guys kind of found one of my silly little mnemonics helpful there, but uh, what we're going to focus on here is the pathway itself. How does that actually happen? How do the nerves move through the brain to ensure this happens? So, um, this drawing right here will be in the description as a Dropbox link so you can download it, but easily just created by drawing some circles and rectangles and ovals uh, to be able to do this. So right here at the front, I have the left and right eye. Then I have cranial nerve number three, nucleus, which is uh, the optic nerve nucleus. We have the MLF, that's the medial longitudinal fasciculus. Um, and then I have the pawns containing uh, the uh, CN6 nucleus. 
Okay, so that's the abducens nerve nucleus. Now, what I'm actually just going to do here, uh, I'm going to use yellow for the neurons here and just going to kind of draw them, but I want to start off really just discussing the muscles first. So we know there are two muscles that control eye movement uh, in the horizontal plane. And uh, one of which, of course, is the lateral rectus muscle. Uh, and, of course, there's a lateral rectus on each side, lateral rectus. Let me uh, actually kind of remove LR over just a little bit to give room for something. And then on this side, of course, we'd have our medial rectus muscle. And that's going to be pulling back here, the medial rectus. I'm going to abbreviate that MR. And these two muscles are under control by neurons. Now, we know that the lateral rectus is controlled by the abducent nerve. Now, the abducent nerve is going to have a cell body located here in cranial nerve number 6 nucleus, CN6 nucleus. And it's going to come out as a neuron, and it's going to synapse here with the lateral rectus on that side. Now, this makes this... Of course, cranial nerve 6, that's the abducent nerve. And there, of course, will be another abducent nerve coming out on this side as well. Synapsing with that one, of course, that would be CN6 as well. And these are your two abducent nerves. Now, what happens from CN6 is information that's coming out of here as well will cross over or decansate here and synapse into a cranial nerve 3 nucleus where that 3 nucleus synapses with the neuron that gives rise to cranial nerve number 3. And of course, as opposite side here, same thing is going to happen. And this is the basic pathway that we're going to see these nerves take okay now what i'm going to do is show how these nerves create uh, a series of stimulatory and inhibitory uh, signals in these in this crossed reflexive way uh, to get all this to work now the cn6 nucleus is getting information from the reticular formation uh, and so the reticular formation will be what's sending and adjusting signals on both sides here, okay? Now, uh, also what I want to talk about uh, now is just how does it do this now? We have the basic wiring here drawn. Let's discuss how it is that we actually use this to conjugately move the eyes either left or right. And I'm going to start off showing you how we look to the right. So how do we look right? So that's what we're going to try to do here is look right. Okay, so what we're going to start to do is if we're going to look to the right, let's say here that our reticular formation has said it is time, and I'm just going to actually, for ease, I'm just going to say RF, for reticular formation, is sending a signal in here saying you need to do that. Then a stimulatory neuron here, this uh, CN6 nucleus, will be stimulated, and one of those neurons coming out of there, stimulatory, of course, will be the abducent cranial nerve 6. And it's going to stimulate the lateral rectus muscle here. And let's just so we know that that is equals stimulates. And it's going to stimulate that muscle, pulling that back. So that's already going to be stimulating there. And also from this area, we're going to send a crossed over signal. Here, those neurons passing through the medial longitudinal fasciculus will synapse with cranial nerve number three nucleus. And that's going to go over here to control the medial rectus muscle 
found over here. So what we're going to do is pull that back. And um, so what this is going to do when that pulls it back, uh, of course, you're going to be looking in that direction. The eyes are going to get pulled that direction. Now, case in point, though, on this side, of course, all this stuff is inhibited. So there will be no stimulation here. And uh, this is going to make sure that it does not uh, fire, uh, keeping that inhibited. So you're going to have um, these kinds of uh, um, opposite kinds of things going on. So what the eye ultimately will do here, of course, is you will see the eyes will look conjugately this way. Let's kind of color that in just so we can see. Okay. And you're going to see the eyes conjugately move in that direction. So uh, this is going to create the movement in a conjugate fashion. Now, if I wanted to look to the left, we're just going to do things oppositely to that. Uh, again, the reticular formation would be like, okay, you guys, we need to look to our left. So we're going to now look left. And if I want to look left, we're going to now want the stimulation on that side here, which means I'm going to have from C and 6 nucleus, I'm going to have the... Uh, uh, CN6 nerve, CN6 nerve, abducent nerve will come in and it will stimulate the lateral rectus here. We will take the lateral rectus muscle and pull it back. So again, this is green representing stimulus, a stimulatory um, reaction. And then the same thing will happen. It will cross over and pass through the medial longitudinal fasciculus into CN3 nucleus, where we will pick that up. And then we will be able to control the uh, through CN3. Let me actually put that on the other side there. CN3. And we're going to pull that muscle back, stimulate that muscle to contract, pulling the eye like that. And, uh, of course, you're going to see you're going to look towards the left side. The eyes are going to look towards the left. Now, of course, with that comes inhibitory reactions as well. Uh, just like before. These inhibitory signals will be sent so that the eye looks conjugately to the left as it's supposed to. Okay. Now, what's going to happen if I do something wrong to that? Uh, and that can happen. Now, I'm actually going to do two different lesions uh, of this pathway. So, what we're actually going to do is uh, kind of discuss this, uh, what would happen uh, on here, and just kind of show you and demonstrate what might happen. Um, I thought I had, uh, there's three drawings, okay. So, uh, give me one second. Okay, so uh, here we have that. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do some lesions if we were to look right and there's going to be two lesions. So first off, there will be lesion A. Lesion A is going to take out cranial nerve number 6 nucleus here on that side. And lesion B is going to damage the right uh, side here, the medial longitudinal fasciculus. So what we want to do, let's say we were attempting to look to the right here, and we, uh, we address the patient uh, to, to do that, to look right, or look left in this case here, sorry, um, I was supposed to be drawing my arrow, uh, my, my uh, uh, notes had me going this way first, okay, so we are instructing our patient to look that way first. So, if uh, everything was uh, normal, we know that we would have a right conjugate gaze. So, what's going to happen 
is uh, so our remember our reticular formation says we need to fire and now just for simplicity I'm only going to do the stimulatory green neurons now and we're going to send this guy out and when he goes to the muscle we can see there's no interruption to signal so that's going to pull back and this guy here um, what's going to happen is um, he is going to go through here, pass through, hit this synapse, and go here, and he's going to want to make this one, of course, stimulate. Now, if we were talking about lesion A, and we have these two eyeballs trying to look, we'll notice that lesion A right here does not impact that at all. So if I ask my patient to look to the right, they will look to the right just fine if they had lesion A. But if they had lesion B, what we're going to do that's interesting here is B, you have on the right side, the right eye here, the right eye is actually going to stimulate and be able to contract. But when I try to make the left eye, it won't and it will stay there. Okay, So this is a horizontal gaze palsy, at least on one side, and you could kind of see what would happen here. Uh, now, um, if we took these same lesions, again, uh, I'm going to, for simplicity, keep lesion A here and lesion B here for simplicity, except now I'm going to be asking my patient to look left. So when they are going to try to look left, of course, you got a neuron here trying to control the uh, lateral rectus and pulling that wants to pull that back, remember? And then this is going to cross over here and uh, be able to make that happen. Now, given that, on lesion A here, we have something else kind of going on. Uh, so A, you would have no excitatory things getting through because they all begin out of that. So you tell them to look to the left and they don't. Their eyes don't move. Now, if they have lesion B, notice none of the stimulatory neurons pass through that. So what we would see is, is upon this examination here, if we have them do that, they would present normal. And this is why they, they check these kinds of things. They track the eye. Um, the eye tracking is there to see, if, especially if things like your uh, brain stem uh, is, 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 is got good integrity. The brain stem is a very fundamental part. This is why pupillary reflexes are tested. This is why these kinds of things are tested, conjugate eye movements, things like that. Because ultimately what uh, we want to happen uh, would not be able to happen precisely if it happened either A or B. So if it, with these two lesions here, it would be important that I would have my patient do both tests so I would know and could localize the lesion uh, and tell where it is. Now from this, you should be able to do any lesion. Uh, so I'm not going to do every conceivable lesion in here, but I wanted to do at least two and kind of show the clinical scenario with it. But I hope you found it helpful and a good video showing pathways. I love neuro. Uh, I love showing the way that neurons move through the brain and helping you guys understand uh, these kinds of movements. So um, if you guys, uh, please, if you like the video, please leave a like, uh, comment, let me know uh, what you would like to see in future videos. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe. Um, and uh, so you just don't miss out on any new videos. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.